What is music theory? Right. And what drives Western music? S, D, T, plus B, L, equals P, A, C. Getting good. We're getting it. That's very nice. We're going to talk about that P, A, C thing today. Ultimately, you know, all of Western music takes these unstable notes. We've spent all this time talking about two, four, six, and seven, those scale degrees, and resolving to one, five, and three, this nice tonic triad. In other words, we have a five, seven chord that resolves to a one chord. At least this is true of the way music used to be back in the good old days when we had folk music and classical music and so forth. These days, we will eventually discover in much of the current worship music, we don't use tritones and, mm -hmm. and we don't use a 5-7 chord per se. We have more of a transient feel throughout the whole piece. I think so. If you will. Filled with chord loops and uh, certain mm -hmm. minimalistic, mm. Hiding mysterious, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes, yes. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. First we have to learn the rules and then learn how music breaks the rules today. So it's bear with about. us and we'll get to that. Um, you know, music is a like a language, mm, sort of like an a abstract love language, language. Mm. and it and it means certain things. And we talked about that way back in like the second session. Um, talked about that a little bit. It's built up of just like language is built up of phonemes, which are used to create syllables, which are used to create words, which are used to create phrases. Yes. Sound familiar? Which are used to create sentences which are used to build paragraphs. paragraphs. And from there you go to chapters and what if it's a big, it's a big Works. work. Mm. Opuses, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Likewise with music, we start with pitches, which we represent with notes, just like a phoneme is represented by a letter or two. So Correct. pitches. And those pitches then are, uh, we, we use it like a cell, such as ba da da, just a little cell, which is then used to build a motif such as ba -da -da -ba -ba, which then is used to build a phrase such as ba -da -da -ba -ba, ba -da -da -ba -ba. very nice which is then used to make a whole sentence there's the sentence and then uh, we put those sentences together and we build a paragraph you want to sing all the parts that would be oh, okay. That would be different. Let's not try it. So, so, so we built that uh, sentence. How do we know when we're done with a phrase, or when we're done with a sentence? Ooh, ooh, pick me. Yes. Well, it would be marked by a cadence of sorts, a resting point in the melody and harmony. Hmm. That's good. That's good. Just as we would do with English or any other language, when you get to the end of a phrase or something, you put some punctuation there. And that's because with your voice, you sort of come to a resting place. Now, sometimes that's a transient resting place. A comma. Indicated by a little turn up in my voice or something like that. And you know there's going to be a second phrase that comes after that. We call it antecedent and consequent phrase. We do the same thing with music. True. And so we mark that end of the first phrase with some sort of a cadence, a mm. transient cadence, Trendent. that we've come to a stopping place, but not a complete stopping place. Mm. When we get to the complete stopping place, what we do with our voice is we sort of turn down, at least in English language, that's what we do. And so now we know I'm done with my thought. Now you know you are done with your thought. However, if I say, now I know I'm done with done my with thought, thought, but not completely yeah. done with my thought. Not completely done with my thought. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I turn up just a little bit. Rise so we have what we would call transient cadences and terminal cadences. Now this gets a little bit, we got a lot of terminology here to throw out, but they're transient cadences. That means they're transient, like transient people. Mm, they're ready to move on. Thing. So with music, we have transient cadences that are on their way to someplace else. And then we have terminal cadences, the perfect authentic cadence. Mm. What are some of those transient cadences? What well, we got four well, or got, five on the list? Yeah, um, one of them 
you could classify as the half cadence. That's probably your That's my most favorite. Common. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now the half cadence is usually marked by a one chord, the tonic chord, going to the dominant chord. It's like a perfect authentic cadence backwards. One goes to five. Yeah. What's another example? <laughs> another example. Uh, could be a deceptive cadence. Oh, yes, a deceptive cadence. You remember back, I played the shave, had a haircut, two bits, and it went from a five chord. You would expect it to go to a one chord. Instead, it went to a six chord. Uh, deceptive cadence. We are on our way. Mm, we know right where we're going. Oof. Took a turn. It's Man, like the, that was a surprise. The keep going chord, if you will. In worship, we use it quite often as a keep going chord at the end. We mm. put a tag at the end. And uh, and we finish that way. What's another example? Other examples would be a imperfect authentic. Perfect. That's uh, no, it's not perfect. <laughs> imperfect. Well, that's imperfect. That was an imperfect answer there. Sometimes you have an authentic cadence, but it's the the melody doesn't have the tonic in it, not and so therefore finished. it doesn't quite sound finished. Blago. These are all examples of transient cadences. Then there is the terminal cadence. Western music, where we're heading eventually, is those unstable notes resolved to the stable notes. Everybody comes home. We like the ending. It's like a good movie, you know? Everything resolves at the end and things are fine. We're happy. The good guy wins. To review, we have been talking about uh, natural stopping places, both in our speaking um, language and then in music as well. Natural mm-hmm. stopping places, some of which are still on their way to some place and some of which are finished. Already there. Now, when we get to that finished point, here's what's interesting, and it's true with English as well. I could be telling just a real short story or a sentence, or I could be saying a whole paragraph. You don't know when I'm saying it, but then I look and come to think of it, that's just one chapter out of a big, long book. And that book oh, is man. part of a trilogy. No, not a trilogy, oh. a whole series of books. And we don't necessarily know when we get to that terminal cadence, whether that's the end of a True. phrase, period, or movement, or the entire symphony, or if the, there's a, a, a whole series beyond that. We don't necessarily know. Not Could necessarily. be the end of a song cycle. We don't know. Uh, but we do know we had a sense, at least a moment, of resolution mm. right at that point. Now, I, I mentioned this before, and uh, it, it is so true that much of today's worship music uh, does not follow this same sense. It's we play true. a chord loop over and over again, and it's sort of a context. Now, there are some subtle things like where the melody goes, that the melody still wants to finish on tonic, in order to feel like we're finished. But that's just about the only sort of cadence point that you have in most worship songs mm-hmm. nowadays. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, we just uh, we, we keep going through that uh, loop. Well, we'll talk about that because that's very practical, but mm-hmm. uh, that'll come a little bit later, and uh, we'll explore some chord loops from there. <laughs> ¶¶ 